Hey, this is Tim Y., the history guy. And Amy S., the podcast guest, together bringing you... Another episode of Winchester 101. Thanks for being my guest today, Amy. Thanks, Tim. I'm glad to be here this time as we focus on some notable women in Winchester in recognition of Women's History Month. While there are so many women who have contributed to making Winchester and beyond a better place, this podcast is intended to highlight the achievements of a few notable women. Yes, and an excellent source for learning more about important women in Winchester's history is a book titled Some Worthy Women, written in 2007 by a much-admired history guy, Michael Foreman. Mike's motivation for the book was partly in response to a book by Dr. Garland Quarles titled Some Worthy Lives that was published in 1988. Foreman noted that Dr. Quarles had only included 11 women out of his 216 biographies in that book. Wow, okay, but enough about these history-minded men. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Winchester has been home to many notable women. Some have fame that extends far beyond Winchester. This includes Country Music Hall of Fame inductee Virginia Patterson Hensley, better known as Patsy Cline, and Pulitzer Prize winning author Willa Cather. While she may not have the name recognition as Cline and Cather, Nancy Lyric Crosby's impact on children's literature was also felt on an international basis. And Tim, I think you've talked about some notable women in early podcasts. That's right. In a prior podcast focused on the contributions of civil rights leaders, I talked about the role of Union-sympathetic Quaker Rebecca Wright, who had written an account of Confederate troop strength in Winchester at the request of Union General Philip Sheridan. In the fall of 1864, she worked with Thomas Laws, who, as a slave, agreed to carry a message from Wright to General Sheridan, who was preparing for battle against Confederate forces. Wright's intelligence proved beneficial in the Third Winchester Battle, which represented the last time that the Confederate Army occupied Winchester. And I believe that same 1864 Civil War battle would also bring fame to a nurse by the name of Matilda Russell, as told in a book by noted author John Eston Cook. Tilly Russell walked four miles out onto the battlefield after the final retreat of the Confederate Army to find a wounded soldier needing medical care. She stayed with him all night, keeping him alive. Her heroic actions, as told in the book, led to the commissioning of a famous painting titled A Night on the Battlefield that was displayed at major national exhibitions. And another woman featured in that prior podcast on civil rights leaders was civil rights advocate Ruth Jackson, a black restaurant owner who operated Ruth's Tea Room on East Cecil Street, where white and black patrons were seated in different sections as required by the state as a condition for obtaining a liquor license. However, Jackson did not insist that they stay segregated once inside her restaurant. Winchester women have been in a wide array of leadership roles in Winchester. In business, Mary Hinkle led the prominent Hinkle Harris Furniture Company for many years. In medicine, Winchester native Dr. Sarah Winifred Brown became an early black gynecologist and would later become the first woman appointed to the Howard University Board of Directors. Also in education, Dr. Tracy Fitzsimmons is the first woman president of Shenandoah University. As far as local government, the contributions of women are substantial, despite archaic rules from nearly a century earlier that denied women the right to vote and to hold public office. This is even more notable for women of color who faced far greater obstacles. Among the notable first was Dorothy Allen, who served as the first white woman on city council in Winchester. Born in 1891, Mrs. Allen was elected to city council in 1954 and re-elected in 1958. And Amy, Mrs. Allen is particularly notable to me in my role as planning director for the city because she was the driving force behind establishing a planning commission back in the 1950s. And the first African-American member on city council was Effie Davis. Effie was a guidance counselor at Hanley High School following integration. In 1975, Davis was appointed to fill an unexpired term on council. She would be elected to a full term in 1978. Thus, there was a black woman on council long before there was a black man on council. And in 1988, council history was made again when Elizabeth Betsy Helm was elected as the first female mayor of Winchester without having served on city council prior to her mayoral election victory. 
Mayor Helm had otherwise broken many glass ceilings, serving on corporation boards of directors, including local banks and large corporations, some of which were outside of Winchester. In 2004, a long-serving female member of City Council, Elizabeth Liz Minor, became mayor of Winchester. She served the second longest term of any Winchester mayor. Liz first served on council in 1980 and was appointed chair of a number of standing council committees as well as special committees like the building committee created to lead the major renovation of Rouse City Hall in 1986. The council chambers in Rouse City Hall is named in her honor. Though never on city council, local historic preservationist Catherine Katie Rockwood was instrumental in the formation of a grassroots historic preservation group. She was instrumental in the formation of Preservation of Historic Winchester and served as PHW's first executive director and then as president of that organization. Rockwood was very involved in creating the first architectural survey of Winchester's historic resources and in the effort to establish a local historic district in the 1970s. Though she died young, her contributions to saving Winchester's vast inventory of historic buildings is a lasting testament to her efforts. Well, Tim, I think we can all agree that Winchester is a better place today because of the contributions of so many women, only a few of whom have been highlighted here. As we present this podcast, it cannot be left unnoted that we say goodbye to outgoing city manager Eden Freeman, the first female city manager in Winchester's century-long list of professional managers. Eden deserves credit for her leadership at among other things, securing the city's first ever AAA bond rating, implementing technology, and guiding the 2019 major renovation of City Hall. Well, that's it for us. Tim Y., the history guy. And Amy S., the podcast guest. Until the next episode of Winchester 101.